Hello, I'm a tuba judge now. Today is Friday. Praise God. Now hear me. Every word that God has spoken to you, see, it's because these are the things that he has written concerning you. And your part is to hook up with the Spirit of God and just walk with him normally. See, God does, the Bible says his commandments are not grievous. God doesn't stress you out to bless you. No, he doesn't. When you see someone stressing himself out to receive the blessing of God, that's not God he's working. It is religion that have taken a hold of him. And let me tell you this also. God has so designed our lives that whatever he's going to bless you with is never far away from you. His blessing is just an instruction away from you. Now that's what I've been sharing all week, you know, on, on, on this. Now, now remember I told you yesterday, God had spoken to Abraham. Now Jacob was moving to Egypt. God came to him and said, look, I'm the one leading you. Go to Egypt. Don't be afraid. I'll make of thee a great nation. Now he went in there. Now when the fullness of time came, you know this, God said after 400 years, you know, in the fourth generation, I explained that to you. The fourth generation doesn't mean the 400th year. It just means that when you clock the 400 years, within that 100 years, I'm going to deliver you. So the fourth generation, generation is by 100. So in the fourth generation, I will deliver you. And that's exactly what God did. Praise God. Meaning the people of the fourth generation will see the, the, the miracle of this word come, come to pass. Now, watch this. Exodus chapter 3. Now, of course, you know the story. Moses got, got out of Egypt, ran away from Egypt. And then here God met him. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people, which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their tax masters, for I know their sorrows. And I am come down to deliver them out of the land of Egypt and to bring them up out of the land unto a, land, unto a good land and a large, unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. Praise God. Now, watch God saying here that I have heard the cry of the children of Israel. But remember... God had told Abraham, there is a program I'm running with you guys. And at this time, I'm going to deliver you. Now God comes to Moses. When the time had come, he came to Moses and said, look, you're going to be free. I'm going to deliver you because I've heard your cry. So the question then is, then is was it their cry that made God to come and say, oh, these people have suffered so much. It's time for me to free them. No, it was the season of their freedom. Now that's why even them, got to that point where they began to sense it in their hearts and they began to feel uncomfortable and then they began to cry and they began to say, Lord, I think we're, we're tired of this, this slavery. We're, we're tired of... Sometimes, now, many times, not just sometimes, actually, when you come to the season of the fulfillment of prophecy, now this thing is going to happen to you. How? A discomfort is going to come to you. You're going to feel... You're going to feel Come, what's going on here? I'm, I'm, I'm feeling somehow. But watch this. Now, look at this. Verse 19, Exodus 3. And I am sure, this is God speaking, I am sure that the king of Egypt will not let you go. No, not by a mighty hand. Now look at 20. And I will stretch out my hand and smite Egypt with all, now notice, God said, I will stretch out my hand and do what? And smite Egypt with all my wonders, which I will do in the midst thereof. And after that, he will let you go. And I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall come to pass that when you go, you shall not go empty. But every woman shall borrow of her neighbor and of her, of her that sojourneth in her house, jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment, and, put, and shall put them upon your sons and upon your daughters, and ye shall spoil the Egyptians. Now look at what God said here. This is Moses. This is after 400 years. 
God came. Remember what God told uh, Abraham in Genesis chapter 15? I think verse 15, God said, you will not, they will not come out empty-handed. Now, when the season came, 400 and something years later, God came to Moses and said, look, this is how you're going to come out. So you're going to spoil the Egyptians. And then you're going to come out with gold and silver and raiment and all good things. Now, get the point. The God who spoke, when the season of fulfillment came, he spoke again to the one who will fulfill it. And what he spoke to the one who will fulfill it was not different from what he told the one who he promised. Now that's to tell you something. God is faithful. It means it is not their prayers that made God to say, oh, let me, in fact, you know what? Because you guys have suffered, eh? I'm going to make sure you're not living empty-handed. No, 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 no. He said it from the beginning, even before Abraham had a child. Now, when the season of fulfillment came, he spoke exactly what he said before. Even this time with more details. You see, because why did he give them more details here? Because they are the ones that will carry out this mission. Now, you see, everything that happened in between, was orchestrated by God himself. Now that's why Moses had to leave Egypt. Because Moses was not going to be the one, the Pharaoh, that, remember what God said. He said they are going to afflict them. So Moses couldn't have been the one to afflict the children of God. So Moses had to separate. So it wasn't Moses' mistake that drove him away. No, it was God orchestrating things. Now that's why I'm telling you this. Everything about your life to this moment. Hear me. It is, has not been by your mistake. Oh, you thought it was by your mistake. No, it hasn't been by your mistake. God has been orchestrating every detail of your life. Say, but, but I've had some terrible experience and I know it's my fault. We'll see how the Lord's going to help us maybe next week to expatiate on that because you, you need to understand these things I'm sharing with you. Praise God, my time is up. Listen, this weekend I want you to do something. Sit down and talk to the Lord and say, Lord, I know you've written things about me. And I come to you now ready to fulfill all those things you've written concerning me. And so shall my life be from today. Help me, Holy Spirit, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you're not born again, this is a time to get born again. This is a time to get saved. Because God is about to fulfill his word concerning your life. Praise God. Have a wonderful weekend. Listen, go to church on Sunday. Bless God. Bless someone's life this weekend. And let the word of God be fulfilled in your life. This is Atsubo George. Until Monday, bye-bye.